In this video, I'll try to cover everything you need to know about the larynx in your upcoming head and neck anatomy exam. Let's start with the basic definition, the location and the functions of the larynx. So the larynx, also named as the voice box, consists of nine cartilages interconnected by membranes, joints and ligaments. The larynx is located approximately at the level of the C3 until C6 vertebral bodies. It is anterior to the esophagus and to its sides we have the thyroid gland. The larynx serves as an airway, a vocal production organ, and as a sphincter, disallowing entry of foreign objects into our airway. As mentioned earlier, the larynx consists of nine cartilages. Now we know that it has three paired and three unpaired cartilages. So the paired cartilages are the arytenoid, the coniculate, and the cuneiform cartilages. The unpaired cartilages are the thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottic cartilages. Let's discuss each cartilage in detail. The thyroid cartilage is the largest of the bunch. It is a hyaline type of cartilages with two laminae, which form four horns, two superior and two inferior. It has two oblique lines onto which hyoid muscles and sternothyroid uh, muscles attach, and two notches as well as one prominence, which is the superior laryngeal prominence or Adam's apple. It sits upon the cricothyroid joints. So this cricothyroid joint basically articulates with the thyroid cartilage and the cricoid cartilage. It allows some rotation and gliding. The cricoid cartilage is a ring-shaped cartilage. It is the only fully closed cartilage of all of, of the laryngeal complex. It is a hyaline type of cartilage. It attaches to the hyoid, uh, to the thyroid cartilage and the trachea. It is a floor for the arytenoid cartilages, basically forming kind of like a window mechanism, those uh, sliding windows. The epiglottic cartilage is a leaf-shaped elastic type of cartilage. It is mucus covered and it is posterior to the roof of the tongue. It forms the superior anterior wall or border of the larynx. It serves as sealing when we swallow. So basically, when you swallow, you can feel your epiglottic cartilage moving downwards. And this uh, maneuver basically blocks the entire complex of the larynx, preventing from food entry into the, into the larynx. So basically, all your food glides, uh, slides straight into your esophagus. The arytenoid cartilages are paired, three-sided pyramidal-shaped cartilages. They are hyaline type and they have three processes. Superiorly, we have the apex on which the coniculate cartilages sit upon. We have the muscular processes laterally onto which muscles attach. And we have the vocal process posteriorly onto which the vocal ligament attaches. The arytenoids sit on top of the cricoid, as I mentioned earlier, working as a sliding or gliding window mechanism. The coniculate cartilages are paired type of elastic cartilages. They sit on the apex of the arytenoids. The cuneiform cartilages are also paired type of elastic uh, cartilages, and these cuneiform cartilages are suspended within the ari epiglottic folds. Let's talk a bit about the ligaments and membranes of the larynx. First of all, we have the quadrangular membrane. Superiorly, the quadrangular membrane forms the ari epiglottic fold which we just mentioned earlier, and inferiorly, it forms the vestibular folds or the false vocal cords. We have the conus elasticus, which basically forms the cone-shaped appearance of the vocal folds, connecting between the vocal ligament 
and to the lateral surface basically forming kind of a, a blockage and allowing air to only pass through the rima glottis or the hole you see that is between the two vocal cords and we have the vocal ligament this vocal ligament is basically thickening at the superior edge of the conus elasticus next we have the laryngeal folds i've just mentioned the vestibular folds which are the false vocal folds uh, vo false vocal cords and the true vocal folds which are made from the vocal ligaments the interior of the larynx so the larynx can be divided into three parts first of all we have the laryngeal vestibule which extends from the opening of the larynx down to the vestibular fold then we have the middle part which is between the vestibular fold and the vocal fold. And we have the infraglottic cavity, which is between the vocal fold and the floor or the inferior edge of the cricoid college. Now let's talk a bit about the muscles of the larynx. We have extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. The extrinsic muscles move the larynx as a whole unit, while the intrinsic muscles control individual movements of comp individual components of the larynx we will focus mostly on the intrinsic muscles let's uh, look at each and every one of them so the vocalis muscle originates from the vocal ligament of the arytenoids so uh, i meant the vocal process not the vocal ligament this is a mistake here so the vocalis uh, muscle originates from the vocal process of the arytenoids and it inserts on the junction between the thyroid lamina so between the vocal process of the arytenoids and you can actually say also the vocal ligament okay but it's basically the vocal process until the uh, junction between the thyroid lamina and it functions as a fine tuner for the vocal production. So basically a bit of the harmonies are, can be changed by the vocalis muscle. Next we have the transverse and oblique arytenoids. So the transverse and oblique arytenoids originate from one arytenoid and insert on the other one. They function as adductors of the arytenoids, closing, them, uh, closing the gap in between them. Then we have the posterior cricoarytenoids. So they originate from the posterior cricoid lamina and they insert on the vocal process of the arytenoid colleges. So here we have the anterior surface of the cricoid. Here we have the post, sorry, this is the anterior, this is the posterior, okay? So this is the arch, while this is the lamina, okay? So this is located anteriorly and this is located posteriorly so the posterior cricoarytenoids uh, originate from this posterior cricoid lamina and they insert on the vocal process of the arytenoid cartilage they function as abductors of the arytenoids or opening of the rima glottis the gap between the vocal cords Next, we have the lateral cricoarytenoids. The lateral cricoarytenoids insert, uh, originate from the anterior cricoid arch uh, here, and they insert on the vocal process of the arytenoid colleges. They function as adductors of the arytenoids or closing of the rima glottis. Then we have the thyroarytenoid cartilage, which originates from the lower margin of the thyroid lamina and it insets on the ant anterolateral arytenoids and functions as a relaxant of the vocal cord. Lastly, we have the cricothyroid muscle. The cricothyroid muscle originates from the anterolateral cricoid cartilage and it insets on the inferior margin and horns of the thyroid cartilage. It functions as a tensor of the vocal cords. Now let's talk uh, a bit about the innovation and blood supply of these muscles. So basically 
all of these muscles except for the cricothyroid are innervated by the inferior laryngeal inferior branch of the recurrent laryngeal nerve which comes from the vagus. The cricothyroid is innervated by the external laryngeal of the superior laryngeal branch of the vagus. So we can say that all of them are innervated by the vagus but by different branches. The blood supply to these muscles is supplied by the superior and inferior laryngeal arteries which come from the superior and inferior thyroid arteries respectfully.